In the last video, we started considering an example uh, where we have to solve Laplace's equation in spherical coordinates. And this involved trying to find the potential inside and outside of a hollow split conducting sphere of radius A with the following boundary conditions. So the top of the sphere is, a, is held at a potential V naught and the bottom of the sphere is grounded. Essentially it's held at a potential of zero. And because of the symmetry of the problem, the actual symmetry, uh, meaning that there's no phi dependence, we said that we could start off from this general form. and then incorporate the boundary conditions and the constraints uh, imposed by the physics of the problem. Uh, in this video, we are going to look at the second case, uh, building up from the last one where we looked inside of the sphere. This one, we're going to look uh, outside of the sphere. So when R is greater than A. And we can even make it uh, equal to because the potential has to be continuous. So it has to be the same when uh, R, uh, the whatever potential we find here, it has to be equal to the one we found in the previous video when R is equal to A. So our physical constraint now is that R can get infinitely large. And that means that if we leave our potential in this form, this term can also get infinitely large. So we need to stop that from happening. So we still want our potential to be finite, which means that as R goes to infinity, we need uh, AL to equal to zero. And when this is in general, it's not only when R goes to infinity, we're going to impose it in general, AL is just equal to zero to completely get rid of this term, uh, which is problematic in the domain that we're considering. So that leaves uh, the following condition. So this is now our starting point, having incorporated uh, the symmetry of the problem and the physical constraints that the potential has to be finite. We can apply our boundary condition now. Which says that at the surface of the sphere, uh, this has to be equal to these two potentials. Right. And uh, if we plug in the numbers, into this expression, then we get this. And as usual, this solution by itself can satisfy this. So we're going to superimpose all of these solutions to build one, uh, to build a function that can satisfy it. We do this to satisfy the boundary condition. We're summing with respect to L from zero to infinity. And we end up with 
uh, a term that looks like this. Uh, so this is the superposition of all of our solutions. And this is again, uh, our boundary condition. And as has been the usual theme, we now use the orthogonality of the Legendre polynomials to collapse the sum and find an expression for our coefficients BL. And once again, we're gonna use the orthogonality condition when M is the remains the same and L can be different. So we have that at the surface of our sphere. We have this, we're going to multiply both sides by PL prime cos theta and integrate from minus one to one. Okay, so this side becomes this. And this side uh, becomes, it's now given by this expression. Okay, we can uh, move the sum outside of the integral and take out the constant terms. And we're left with evaluating this integral, which, which we know has to equal to uh, two, 12 plus one Kronecker delta L, L prime. So that's the result of this whole integral. The Kronecker delta kills every term in the sum except for one when L is equal to L prime. And we're left with this. And all of this still has to equal to whatever this integral is. Remember that at the surface of the sphere and the bottom half, the potential is equal to zero and the top half, the potential is equal to V naught. So this integral over here will uh, only the term between zero and one will survive. The other one is equal to zero. And this has to equal to this term over here. So we found an expression for our coefficients in our superposition, namely, PL prime is equal to V naught prime plus one, A to the L prime plus one, over two, V naught, and this integral. 
Okay, so this is the expression for our coefficient BL. And remember, because of the Kronecker delta, this is the same thing. BL prime is the same thing as BL. You can just think of this as a, as a dummy variable. Okay, so that makes uh, our general solution for the potential outside of the sphere. Not A to R. One cosine theta. theta and so on. And remember this is coming from uh, from this expression over here. So the Legendre polynomials are uh, that appear here, they're from the theta dependence. You have the R's here at the bottom and every other term is from uh, the value of the of our coefficient BL. Okay, so this gives us the uh, potential outside of the sphere. And it's an infinite sum, so there's infinitely many terms. And in practice, it would only take up until uh, the terms stop contributing a certain amount. So up until you get a certain accuracy in your, in your solution. So this concludes our example of how we use the general solution to Laplace's equation in spherical coordinates in a physical context using superposition and the uh, orthogonality of Lachan polynomials.